Imagine having dependable... Need one. So we'd worked together before, but not on a regular basis. We were one of two roving units moving through the area. Two other units had taken up roadside positions, looking like motorists in trouble. You fellas need a hand? Only if it's got a cup of hot coffee in it. Whose bright idea was it for me to be the guy freezing his butt up by the roadside? Privilege of rank, Ed. You said you wanted the hot seat. Guess I was wrong about that part, too. Well, you picked yourself the cutest partner. <laughs> you see anything? Not even another car. Well, let's hope it stays that way. We're going to cruise over to the 9th, give Jim and his partner some coffee. You want us to hit you on the way back? Might as well. We ain't going nowhere. So. Have a good time. Out slow. Let's go around and have a look at him. It's insane. I'm sitting there watching this big goofy bird, I don't know, big bird or something like that. Hey, check this out. Just letting her cool down. Fan belt slips a bit. Top Copsy is brought to you in part. Run me a plate. 7L4362, Michigan. Or Oklahoma. Ed Muzzy couldn't make out any more than the colors and the numbers, guesstimating it was from Michigan or Oklahoma. But the check came back clear, so he let it drop. The occupants of the car had been young and black, but they hadn't followed the M.O., so he figured they weren't our guys. For the first three hours, nothing happened. Nobody saw anything. How's Ann doing? Still going out with her? Yeah, she's great. When are you two going to get serious? <laughs> I don't know. I'm too young to get married. <laughs> that Buick Ed called in. It was 45 minutes ago. Think he's lost? I don't see anybody. Low riders. Some of the guys around here think it's cool to drive around scrunch low. I'm taking the next turn. Okay, something's going on. All units, this is decoy one. We have a tailing car at nine from St. Clair. I knew this could be the bandit car, but I had to wait for him to make his move. This is the scariest moment of a decoy operation, knowing they're coming for you and also knowing they get the first punch. Get ready, here he comes. shoot without hitting me. There was no doubt the guy in the car was going to shoot us. And I just thought, well, if the other two get out and see we're cops, they're going to shoot us anyway. That all took just a split second. We'd given them the first punch. I didn't see any reason to give them the second.
50 to 60 miles an hour, but we were just staying on their tail. The area where they led us had no street signs, and we were really unclear as to exactly where we were, so we couldn't direct our back up. A few minutes later, they made two quick turns, and we momentarily lost sight of them. When we spotted the car again, it had stopped. Damn, Lord, Jeff, easy. Careful. Careful, Bill. Maybe an ambush. He'd be covered. Nobody home. Looks like I hit one. Looks like you got him good. Let's get a canine out here. We'll never find these guys in the dark. Mike Donovan, our canine officer, was there within minutes. The other decoy units arrived and we started a search. just above his mouth and his two accomplices had helped him from the car and taken off when they heard us coming. When we found him, he was crawling back to us for help. His name was Brian Crockett and he was a police character, somebody we knew. We cuffed him, gave him first aid and got an ambulance to the scene. He was interviewed the following day and he cooperated, giving up the other two. Over the next few days, we cleared six of the robberies off our books as well as an unrelated homicide. The terror of the highway bandit attacks came to an end that night. There was an investigation into my shooting and it was judge warranted. It was them or us. We had no choice but to react to their actions. Those actions were wrong and now they're paying for them. The weigh-ins, Wednesday. We return. Court officer Charles Falzone fights to save a man who tried to kill him.